All right. Evening, everybody, or good morning, depending on where you're at. Thanks for uh, joining, everybody. We got Wolverine, Ron, Judah's ready to rock and roll. Love it. Welcome, everybody. Oh, yes, Guy from Quebec. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thanks for joining tonight. We're going to talk about uh, Dries here from California, of course. What's up, Dan? Welcome, welcome. Hope everybody's doing good. Uh, Eddie G, what's up? Martin from Massachusetts. Excellent. Todd from Vancouver. Awesome. Lived uh, for nine years in Vancouver, so I uh, hope things are well up there. New Zealand, Phil, welcome. Ron from Vegas. Rock, Rick and Sticks. Rick Sticks. Checking in. What's up, man? Teddy. Charlie Boy. All right. Jim King from Ontario. Kingston in the house. Scott, Sacramento, Tony, excellent. What's cracking, Ian? Welcome. Good to see you. Jared, we got lots of peeps jumping on. Costa Rica, I love it. Fred, Alan, what's up? How's it going, everybody? I want to give everybody a shout out. From uh, Wisconsin, Randy, Ron from Boston. Moe's here, awesome. Thanks for, uh, for coming on in. MKA Melt is here from Tripoli. That's crazy. That's awesome. Excuse me. There's like a firefly in here or something on the microphone. Pittsburgh in the house. What's up, Andre? Wolverine is here. Wolverine, what are you doing here? Your wife's birthday is right now. <laughs> Mr. Daniel of Black Metal. Thanks for joining us. Todd from Kingston, home of the hip. That's right. What am I going to play a little? Uh <laughs> badly <laughs> all right david walker from atlanta excellent new englanders tonight syracuse jody one excellent music bill all right well listen we got a great uh crew tonight i i appreciate each and every one of you joining in tonight let's kind of get to it a little bit uh, for those of you new to the Friday Night Live or the uh, YouTube Live here for Guitar Tricks, uh, do like a lesson. It's an hour session. I'll do a lesson, talk about stuff, but uh, there's all, hopefully always time for questions at the end. Anything uh, guitar related. Doug, what's up from Castlegar? Love it, man. British Columbia. Excellent. Uh, so if you have any questions at all, throw them in the comments there. I'll go through them towards the end of the hour. And uh, San Diego's in the house. Thanks, Tim. Good to see you. All right. So, uh, court arpeggiation boot camp. So, some of you have been coming. Oh, Macedonia. Welcome, welcome. Excellent. That's awesome. Vietnam. Amazing. Jeff, howdy. What's up? Uh, I did do a, an arpeggiation uh, thing. It was called an arpeggiation workshop. Maybe a couple months ago, three months ago, four months ago in that range. It might have even been on Facebook Live. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I got a great question. I believe it was from Mo in my uh, in uh, on my forum on Guitar Tricks. Wanted to, uh, you know, had some great questions about arpeggiation. I thought, you know what, it'd be fun to go through uh, some uh, in a little more detail some things uh i unfortunately no i do not know any macedonian songs sorry about that uh i'm like a classic rock guy dude so uh unfortunately i can't help you out with that <laughs> uh okay so i decided to make this our arpeggiation boot camp we'll talk a little bit about all right union city california excellent welcome welcome uh so chord arpeggiation what is it right uh, we talk about arpeggios or chord arpeggiation. They're sort of a different thing. Uh, closely related, when you think about the notes, the individual notes that make up chords, okay? Uh, when we play through those notes, uh, they can be an arpeggio. But a lot of times when we're talking about arpeggiation, what we're talking about is playing a chord, and instead of strumming it, we're going to pick individual notes out of the chord and let them ring out together. This gives you a whole different feel, a whole different texture uh, versus strumming. 
and picking the notes. Okay. Uh, when we talk about chord arpeggiations, uh, uh, arpeggios, I'm sorry, chord arpeggios, I'm thinking more in terms of the notes, sort of shapes on the fretboard that uh, make up the notes in a chord. And it's a little bit different. So for example, you know, a C major arpeggio might look something like... Uh, that kind of thing. And, uh, you know, arpeggios are used in metal, well, all genres, really, country, metal, jazz, right, as a way of sort of playing leads and embellishing chords and, and improvising off chords, particularly, or a minor arpeggio, right? Like, it's a little bit different than, you know, playing an A minor and holding a shape of a chord and picking the notes out individually, let them ring out together. That's sort of what we're getting at with the chord arpeggiation. Okay, uh, before I get into some examples, and uh, oh yeah, by the way, uh, there's a tab for those of you unaware. Uh, expand the description right below this video. There is a PDF download of uh, the examples I'm gonna go through tonight. Okay, so, uh, and yes, Dree, we'll talk a little bit about raking at the end. Remind me, I'm going to actually make a note of that because I don't want to forget. It's sort of a separate thing, uh, but it, I guess you can sort of think of it in terms of that. So uh, I'll mention something towards the end of what I have prepared here. So there is a handout. Uh, expand the description below the video. Download the handout and uh, have a look at some of these examples. Uh, sweep picking, that's an excellent suggestion for a workshop. I'll put it down for a, uh, we'll possibly do something and uh, possibly do something in the future on that. I appreciate that, Martin. Uh, actually, uh, if any of you on here have any specific things that you'd like me to go over in, in uh, upcoming weeks, uh, just let me know in the comments and I'll run through towards the end and, and sort of make a note of uh, some of your sub suggestions. And uh, because I'm always looking for good uh, ideas for what to cover in these sessions. So uh, chord arpeggiation, basically, you know, you can kind of come up with anything um, to arpeggiate a chord. You can create any kind of, uh, I mean, <clears throat> there's literally limitless uh, sort of combinations of how you can put together picking patterns that will arpeggiate chords. A lot of it has to do with what you're doing musically, right? I like that one. Uh, just hold on, put that down. Speed training. <laughs> What's up, James? How's it going? Uh, so uh, a lot of things come into play here in making a chord arpeggiation pattern sort of work out. There are a couple things to consider. You need to sort of consider the uh, the feel of the song and more specifically the time signature of the song and the rhythm of the picks that you're doing and just making that work out within, you know, the rhythm of the song and making it relate, you know, work out against where the chord changes happen. So if we look at the first example, 1A, is, is just sort of the most simplest way to think about getting into chord arpeggiation. I've called it a root five picking pattern, but what I'm grabbing is an A minor seven. Okay, that's second fret of the D, first fret of the B. Okay. So thanks, Glenn, right on, man. Appreciate you. Check it out whenever you can, okay? Okay, so what, we're, what we've got going here, and you can see my picking pattern here is starting on the lowest note of the chord, right? The open A string and then just going up the strings. Letting them ring out, I'm using down strokes. And then I'm coming back with up strokes starting on the top string. And coming back down. So let's see how this works out rhythmically, okay? Because uh, we, we're doing eighth notes, so it would be one and two and three and four and one and two. So do you see that this simple picking pattern it works out perfectly 
um, going up and down the chord for one entire bar of eighth notes. Okay, so let's say we stay on this chord for uh, one bar and then we go to a C chord for the next bar. You can use this exact same arpeggiation pattern and it works out great for the chord change because you're just ending up back where you started, right where the chord change is. Okay, so. Right on, Ed. Yes, we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that, okay? We're going to get to the House of the Rising Sun. Yeah, Wolverine, how important is it to upstroke the high E strings? Self-taught bad habit can't seem to break. Well, listen, so... Here's the thing, up, up, okay? But that's a, that's actually okay if you have if that works for you, okay? Oh no, do we lose it? Am I back? Is everybody okay? Is everybody there? Oh no, it is still saying I'm connected. Oh, we're back. Oh, my goodness. Oof, it did not kick me out of this. Okay, so I kept going and it's still working. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, man. Sorry about that. Just went choppy a bit. Okay, we're back. Okay. So I was talking about the picking pattern. Okay, thanks. Thanks for that. Yeah, I'm going to knock on wood here. <laughs> okay. Now, I get into the habit of doing this pick in the direction you're going to, okay? So, but in this case, it really does depend on the economy of motion of the picking pattern you're using because in this simple case, okay, you could do all down strokes and then come back up on an upstroke if you wanted to. Now, I find that a little bit difficult because you see how now I've done a down stroke on the top string and now I have to get to the B string on an upstroke. So it's, it's, it's like I'm in danger of hitting the upstroke. Coming, uh, with the upstroke, I'm in danger of hitting the E string again to come back down the strings. That's why it's, it's good practice to be able to hit the upstroke on the top string and bring it all down from there, okay? because you eliminate that danger where you've done a downstroke on the top string and now you have to come back and, and do an upstroke on the B string, which is a little tricky to not hit the E string again. But the, it, the other thing with chord arpeggiation patterns, as we're gonna see, we're gonna kind of jumble stuff up and do some different things, okay? Uh, it really is dependent on the pattern uh, what will dictate what makes best, best, uh, what, what picking pattern works the best for what you're doing. So a little bit of experimentation and a little bit about figuring this stuff out. Okay. Uh, yeah, right on John. Thanks, man. Yeah. Uh, Wolfgang special here. Uh, Ian, is there a downside to alternate picking in arpeggio, arpe arpeggio or arpe arpeggiation? Um, there isn't, you actually could practice your alternate picking down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Okay. Doing that. There's no law against that. And that's actually something that could really improve your picking technique. Uh, alternate picking one string at a time going up and down a chord. Okay. You can make a practice exercise out of that and become really good at that sort of thing. And it just gives you another tool in the toolbox to be able to pull out and, and maybe, you know, use in a certain situation that makes sense. Okay. Tone settings that work best for this. I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, you know, I'm going to use a clean sound all the way through this tutorial, but I'll show you some examples towards the end of some, you know, more well-known songs that use full gain, right? A little bit of palm muting. Okay. So uh, that'll work too. Uh, yeah. Killer of Giants. Wolverine, that's an arpeggi uh, arpeggiation, just tons of chords and arpeggiations. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. All right. So, uh, so that's the first exercise is really just get your foot wet and get used to the idea. Two and three and four. 
four and one and two and three and four and okay. Now here's the thing with arpeggiation patterns. Where you're gonna count encounter this stuff is when you're trying to learn songs, okay? And lots of songs have lots of different parts, uh, arpeggiation parts that are, you know, there's not, like I said, there's so many combinations of this thing. So the thing that you have to do to really get this under your picking and really get it under your fingers is to slow way down. You know, a, a lot of my regulars here know that, I, you know, I trumpet this all the time. You got to slow it down and you have to work out where you're going to do the downs and ups. And you just have to keep at this so slow. Okay. And work your way up to being able to play this up to speed, okay? Because some arpeggiation patterns are just tough to get right off the top. And the, the only way to do that is just to slow it down, make sure you're doing it correctly, but go just really slow with it, okay? Right on, Susan, you made it. Excellent, Sarah Jane from Phil's, all right. <laughs> slow and accurate, that's right, Dree. If we can go slow and accurate and just lots of repetition, you're gonna burn it in and be able to play it much faster, okay? With all that sort of targeted drilling. All right, so uh, now what I've talked about is one chord change per bar here, okay? And uh, you can use this same approach. Well, you can see that if I'm using a chord that has a root note on the A string or the fifth string, right? That if I'm playing straight eighth notes up and down the chord, it works out over the course of a measure, right? Like one and two and three and four. And, and then it just loops back around nicely, okay? Now you can do the same thing with uh, a, an open chord or a bar chord that has a root on the sixth string. But because, because we only have a certain amount of notes that we can pick up and down that chord, you need to pick the string sets that you're going to pick on, on top, right? So for example, uh, 1B and 1C are two different picking patterns using this idea um, with the root. Hey, Kenneth, what's up? Okay, let's grab an open, open G. And if I start with the low string and just stay with uh, the low five strings, so down, up on the B string and come down. Okay, that works great. But you have another option where you can go root on the low string and then sort of skip the next string and go D, G, B, and then come down E, B, G. Right? So that. So do you see the difference between those two, uh, those two picking patterns? Tom, excellent. Work it on simple, man. That's the one, right? Uh, uh, not going to bust it out right now. Should have thought of that one, but absolutely. Chord arpeggiation right there. Okay. So what you're going to see usually is that, uh, look, if you've got chords that use all six strings and just depending on when those chord change happens, you might have to skip some strings in there. Is all kind of I'm showing you a little bit, okay? So you have a couple choices. You play that G chord with just the low strings going up to the B string. Or you can pick the low note, skip a string, and arpeggiate the top strings, okay? Just different sounds, right? Um, the upper strings might work better. Say if, if you're going from a C to a G chord. Right? It puts those top strings more in an even register, right? If, I, if I'm going from a C to a G chord, and I go to the G chord, but I do the low ones. Okay? It, you know, there's a little jump in the register of those upper notes, right? So just things to think about. You might want that, right? Like, here's the thing. There's no real wrong answer here if, you know, just depending on what you want to go for musically, right? There are tons of combinations on this stuff. There's no real hard, fast rules on it. Just try to make it out, uh, to make it work out with where the chord changes happen and what rhythm you're playing against the time signature. And... 
there you go. That's the, the key to it. Okay, so we're going to look here at uh, the D chord now. Okay, so I'm calling this the root four. And by the way, you know, I'm using open chords right now, but but all of this works with bar chords too, right? If I did the bar chord G or this, right? It is, it's, it's finger picking with a pick. That's all this is here, right? We're kind of talking about that a little bit. Um, feels like you're holding the pick very lightly. Uh, you kind of want to have, you know, it, it just, the pressure that you hold the pick is always a tough one because it, it's going to change depending on what you're doing. Sometimes you're going to hold it light for a lighter touch. Other times you're going to dig into it and want to dig into the string a little bit and get a little more of an attack and a little more of an aggressive sound. So again, these are all musical choices. Okay. <laughs> all right. Is it more common with arpeggios versus chords to start on a root or inversions? Well, another great point is that, uh, yeah, sometimes we will do a G over B, right? Instead of the G chord. Again, a musical choice. And something like that might have something more to do with, well, I have a C going to a G that goes to an A minor. So I want that walk down sound with the root notes, right? So, okay, then you're going to use a chord inversion, okay? So lots of musical choices happening with that, all right? What size pick am I using? Just a regular, I don't know, that's kind of like a regular size pick. It's a one millimeter, so it's a little on the harder side, which I like on the electric. What's up, Danny? Excellent. <laughs> all right, Ron R., I like that. Okay, so... Now let's talk about the D chord. So we were talking about what if your root's on the fourth string and you've got a full bar and you're going to use eighth notes, right? So what happens is we're going to run out of strings to play the same pattern that we were using on the C chord and the G chord. Now we've got less strings to arpeggiate, right? You kind of had, have to add in, in that uh, exercise, 2A, I'm adding in an extra two picks at the end to make it work out to loop around to the... Right? And so what we might introduce here is exercise 2B, picking pattern number two, where we're going to sort of mix up the picking pattern a little bit. so that it fits that chord that's only using four strings. It fits it a little bit better. It adds an extra texture to it, right? Because now we're introducing different directions into our picking, okay? So I'm going up. I'm just doing two down strokes on the D string and then the second fret of the G. Then I've got an up stroke on the third fret of the B. Then I'm gonna change directions again. So I've got a down stroke on the second fret of the G upstroke on the top string and the B string and then back to the G string with a downstroke upstroke on the B okay very common to use that that picking pattern right and a lot of that has to do with if you go to a D chord it sounds probably a little bit better, a little more texture to it, and a little more interesting than just going up and down and then adding in a couple notes at the end. Although, you might want that, right? And Ian, great, great one. Yeah, I should have thought of that one too. Anybody out there? Another great one. And that's an example of one, just a sidebar, uh, where we were talking about starting on the root. In this case, there's a motion happening starting on the fifth of that A minor chord. I'm talking about this Pink Floyd song. And you're going fifth, and then sharp five, and then sixth, back down, right? You're not, you're not really playing the root on part of that. Anyway, I digress, but yeah. Good choice there for another one to learn that really get inside this sort of technique a little bit. 
Okay, so uh, getting back to exercise 2B, now we're adding in some different directions. Okay? Now, we can do this with root 5 and root 6 chords too. Okay? All we're going to do is change the, the root note from the D string to, let's say, a C chord to grab the A string. And then I'm still going to use this picking pattern on the top three strings. Right? So if I go from a D... Messed it up, but... <laughs> yeah, that is a very similar, uh, you know, adding in a little expressive thing onto the chords. Wolverine, a little bit of Tesla there. But, uh, and of course we can do that, but it's really just that pattern. Okay, that kind of thing. So my point is on exercise 2B, you can just move the root note to the string that it needs to be, but continue that picking pattern on the top three strings, okay? Or you can move that picking pattern from the top three strings to the next string set down. So for example, on the C chord, okay? Now I moved it to uh, another Tesla. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, that's the one. Anyway. Um, yeah, Erica. So Travis picking, is that a set pattern versus what I'm talking about right now? Yeah, Travis picking is a little more, uh, again, you sort of have to change string sets depending on where your roots are. And a lot of times in Travis picking, you're alternating between a root and a fifth. But uh, there are some really difficult uh, or more advanced, I should say, um, uh, syncopations with the picking in between. The rhythm is a real uh, sort of standardized rhythm that's a little bit tricky, okay, because there's a lot of syncopation in it. So I'm not going to quite get to Travis picking because that's a little bit uh, more advanced than what I'm talking about tonight, okay? But you are right. It is sort of a, uh, you know, sort of a, uh, it's still a chord arpeggiation pattern and it's a little more specific. Okay. John, yes. House of the Rising Sun's coming up. Love in vain. Excellent. There you go. Another great one, Todd. Great, uh, great suggestion there. Cool. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, so just messing with the direction of the picks to make it work out with, you know, where your chord changes are happening and to make it nice and smooth. That's the sort of thing that we're talking about. Now, if we go to 2C, Okay, exercise 2C, and I'm staying on the D chord. And what I've done is I've changed, I've given an example of a different time signature. Now I'm in a 6 8 time signature, which goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. In this case, it actually works out to just go up and down that chord shape for D. Right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4. Right? So in this case, going up and down with the simplest arpeggiation pattern, it works perfectly because of the time signature. We're, we now only have six picks per bar, so we can... Right? It all works out if you're doing a chord change per bar to do that picking pattern. So that's another example. All right, everybody hurts. All great stuff. Zeppelin, babe, I'm going to leave you for sure. Absolutely. Um, that one's a little more uh, involved with just, you know, switching directions a little bit. And uh, I wonder if Paige used finger picking or a pick on that. I'm not 100% sure on that one. Sounds like maybe he was using a pick, right? All right, we're going to keep going, going here on uh, going to 2D. So what I'm doing is basically taking that directional path. I, I actually jumped the gun on this one because I think I already said this, but if you take that C chord and just use that picking pattern from picker, picking pattern two from 2B and just apply it to a C chord. Okay, 
you're, you're going back and forth across the strings in, in you know, sort of a set direction. And all you're doing is just changing the string where the root is to where the root is, right? And, you know, somebody suggested that I could use an inversion. I could do the fifth here of the chord and keep it all in the D string too, right? So you go. That's always an option too, okay? Like I said, lots of variations here. Okay, uh, so again, on the C chord in 6-8 time, say, it'll work out just with, again, going straight up and down the top three strings, but you're playing your root on the A string. Okay. All right, everybody hanging with me. Okay, so I'm going to go into exercise 3A now, and... I'm starting off with a strum pattern, and this strum pattern is one of the most common strum patterns that you'll hear out there. And I wanna relate it to turning it into one of the most used arpeggiation patterns, which is based on the same rhythm, okay? So if I do a C chord and I do this strum pattern, down, down, up, up, down, down, down turn down, 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 up, up, down. If I apply that rhythm to a chord arpeggiation, it's going to sound like this on a C chord. Okay. Now, there's a few differences here because when I'm strumming this, I've got my down ups locked to the rhythm. So they're sort of happening differently than the way I would pick it because I'm going down, down, up, up, down. But it doesn't really make sense if you're going to pick single notes out of it to use that picking pattern. Okay, so here I'm just following the direction of the strings. Okay, two down strokes and then three up strokes. And just notice the texture of this. You'll recognize this where you're hitting three eighth notes, but you're letting one of them sort of ring out for an extra eighth note before picking up the pattern again. Okay, and it gives you that same feel as this strum pattern. Okay, so this is a very common thing. So in 3B, I've got a C chord and then I've got an F chord. Okay. And of course, this can work on bar chords as well, uh, different chord shapes, whatever. We're just talking about sort of the picking pattern. You can apply this to any string set you would like. Just a very common arpeggiation approach. So if I look to 3C, what I can do, uh, another variation of this, is to strum the first parts of the chord and then add in arpeggiations at the end. This is also a very common thing. <laughs> Everybody kind of hear that? Whoops, messed it up. Okay. Another very common approach here is to incorporate strums and add in some arpeggiations. Okay. We'll, we'll get into a little more of that. Page two of this are all sort of a little more musical examples to show you some different things that you can do. And sort of the last exercise that I left here on uh, exercise four is to apply this to triads. And this is also a very common thing to do. And I've actually applied the exact same rhythm we were just working on, but in the context of triads. Okay. So what I've got are some A triads. My first one is just barring down on the D, G, and B 14th fret. Okay. It's an A triad. And then I'm moving that inversion down to the next set of A, uh, A major, which is right here. This is the first inversion. I'm going from the second inversion to the first inversion, which is the 11th fret of the D, 9th fret of the G, 10th fret of the B. Okay. Then going down to 
this triad shape, seventh fret of the D, sixth fret of the G, fifth fret of the B. And then finally down an octave lower where we started in the open position, right? So a little exercise here to go. Cool. I love it. The harmonic stuff. Excellent, Jeff. I love that. Okay. So uh, I just chose uh, the D, G, and B strings in a major. You can use these for minors. You can use them on different string sets, right? I can go up for D. Something like that, right? Okay. So there's that, some triad arpeggiation. All right, let's get into some examples here. So a lot of this is sort of going to be reviewing what we talked about in the first page, but uh, more sort of specific musical examples, okay? So first one is in 6-8, okay? And this is a, a famous song, Sleepwalk. This is sort of light. It's not uh, exactly, I don't think they actually, well, I, I can't say that the version on guitar tricks that we teach does not arpeggiate the chords, it strums the chords, but it sounds this is the kind of chord progression that sounds really nice with some chord arpeggiation. So you're starting on a C major, it's the upper part of a C major bar chord, 10th fret of the D, 9th fret of the G, and barring down on the 8th fret of the top two strings. And then we're going to go to A minor. 7th fret of the D, barring down on the 5th fret of the top three strings. That's our minor shape. Then we're going to slide our minor shape down to F. So I've got the 3rd fret of the D, but I've still got the same shape, 1st fret of the top three strings. And then bring it up two more frets and go back to the major shape, 5th fret of the D, 4th fret of the G, barring down on the 3rd fret of the top three strings. This is a G major. Okay, so this is a pretty common chord progression with a little added twist that you've got two minors in a row. Uh, that's a little bit more specific to the, to the Sleepwalk song, but it's definitely a cool sound. And so we can arpeggiate this. It just sounds really nice in 6-8. Peter, what's up? In 6-8, it just, you can't beat this floaty, dreamy. Straight up the strings and back down. Okay, just a classic sound, right? Used in tons of songs. Yes, Ian, that's what I'm referring to, the old Santo and Johnny classic, of which there are many versions. So like I said, the Guitar Tricks version that I actually taught uh, uses chord strums on on that but uh it's fun it sounds really nice with the arpeggiations as well so that's a very basic chord uh chord arpeggiation pattern that just always sounds so good sounds great uh, <laughs> right on susan thank you inside joke okay so uh house of the rising sun it got mentioned a couple times let's do it i only did the first uh <laughs> first couple chords of this, but there's a little bit of a twist to this chord progression. Well, the first one being, it is in 12-8, okay? So uh, we're adding in, uh, it's two chords per bar, okay? And we're, go we're going, we're sort of doubling up on that pulse, right? Because we're 12 eight now. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, okay? Excellent. Right on, Susan. So A minor is the first chord. Going to C. Okay. So. Messed it up at the end here. Let's play it one more time. Ha. So a couple interesting things in this 
in this arpeggiation pattern. The first one being adding in those 16th notes. Okay, we're, we're picking mostly eighths. But we double up on the second pick, okay? Going into two 16th notes over that little subdivision, right? So you've got that thing going. And then it's just straight eighth notes coming back down with the upstrokes. Uh, so. Yeah. Absolutely, Mr. Daniel, I'm with you on that for sure. Okay. C chord, same picking. Now check out what happens, what they do here when you get to the D chord. Now, you're, now you've you're you're arpeggiating four strings instead of five. So notice the double note at the top string. Okay, that's how they do it, right? That's how they make it work out with the timing. Is that they do it? They pick a double note at the top. Okay, and that makes up for that one less string that you're picking to keep it in time. Okay, so really interesting stuff here on just some techniques you can use to make stuff arpeggiations work with a chord progression that you've got with whatever feel you're working with. Okay, um, raking. I'm gonna do a little side thing for Dre and just talk a little bit about raking. Uh, <laughs> Uh, a lot of times you can do, uh, when I think of raking, a, a lot of that has to do with playing single notes. Like, for example, if I, uh, if, if I'm playing a lead or something and I want to like kind of come into, come into a note, there's a couple of ways to do this with a rake. So the first one is that you just kind of do the, the, the open strings to like say a note on one of the top strings, kind of like that, you see? And it's just adding this percussive sort of cool sound to it. It's being a little bit expressive, right? But there's also another thing where you can kind of really quickly do like a chord shape coming up to that note. So for example, let's look at an, like an A minor shape up there. And that rake is so fast, you don't really, you don't really hear it um, you know, super coming out, but so that's just a variation of doing a rake where you're actually hitting a chord shape and kind of coming into a single note. So it's sort of related to chord, uh, arpeggiation, but you know, now that I've so I'm sort of playing with that, not really, it's more has to do with some single notes and just, you know, making it, uh, sort of emphatic coming into a single note. You know what I mean? Like just you know, raking across the string and just, you know, it's just a way to be expressive on single notes really. But you can't, yes, you can. You can kind of add a chord shape to that if you want to take it to the extra level of just, you know, making it sound a little more musical with those. But it happens really fast, okay? That kind of thing, okay? Cool, great question. Thank you, Dre. Okay, so House of the Rising Sun, good stuff in there, right? I uh, had another example here from the country side of things, classic country, Folsom Prison Blues, and this sort of comes out of uh, the uh, the solo. It's it's not quite the same, but you can see that uh, that first bar. <laughs> The first bar is arpeggiating on four strings, starting with sliding into the root note, seventh fret of the D, and you've got an A major shape from the bar chord up top. Excuse me. So you've got the, the seventh fret of the D, sixth fret of the G, barring down on the fifth fret of the top string. And again, we've got that picking pattern with that rhythm, right? Where we're going into that top note and letting it ring out and then picking it up on the notes coming back down. But watch what happens in the next bar. He's gonna go to three strings. Exact same picking rhythm, but 
playing the notes on three strings, right? So you're starting with that root, and then you're picking on the top three strings. Second bar, you're sliding into just this triad shape, sixth fret of the G, fifth fret of the top two strings. And at that point, it's just like that triad exercise that we were doing, right? Uh, C. Okay, just switching it up a little bit for a different sound. Pretty cool. And then sliding up to a higher triad for A, higher A major triad. Sliding in. Okay, ninth fret of the G, 10th fret of the B, ninth fret of the high string. Second inversion. A triad. Okay, that comes right out of the solo a little bit. That's just a little chunk of that solo, but it shows you how those triads are being used and some different ways that you can approach arpeggiating those. All right, exercise eight, a la Triumph. This, a lot of you might not get this reference, but uh, actually Triumph, the band, came up last week. So uh, I had it on the brain and I thought of this song. It's actually uh, the breakdown section from a song called Fight the Good Fight for any of you out there who, know, who are familiar with Triumph. But uh, great arpeggiation approach here. And we're starting on a D minor chord, okay? And again, it's very similar to that rhythm that we had just gone through, except it's all eighth notes until we get to the top string where it rings out over a beat and then we're back down on the other strings. All right, Jeff, I love it. Okay, and you're gonna move that shape up in the next bar, just two frets. So that's an E minor over D, okay? And then the next shape is the D major shape, okay, which is uh, the fifth, sixth, and fifth fret of the uh, top strings. That's going to be an F major triad, <laughs> right on. I love it. All you triumph fans out there, I love it. <laughs> Anthony McSee. Cheers, my man. All right. So yeah, this is a great I try motorcycles are awesome. I love it, Peter. Good one. Okay, so added little thing here in the fourth bar on coming back down on this D minor triad or E minor triad. Just doing a quick hammer on and pull off on the top string. It just adds a nice little embellishment. Okay, so Great part. I'm going to repeat this. And again, just a great example of some chord arpeggiation. Great stuff. Okay. Oh, no. Did you lose me again? Oh. Am I back? What's up? Let me know I'm back. I hope I never left. It's not kicking me out for some reason this time. It's very strange. All right, Susan. I'm still going. I'm just looking weird. I guess I gotta I gotta find a more strategic place for my router. Okay, we're here. Good, 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 good. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, it's choppy with some people. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Gotta have my goblet. We're we're going uh, glassware tonight. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, hopefully we can hang in here for the last 10 minutes. I, I apologize if it's not coming through loud and clear for some of you. Uh, okay. So that was the triumph exercise. Okay. So now here's another great example. So i uh, got to go to Boston. Okay. Uh, more than a feel, right? Now this one has a very specific arpeggiation pattern. Okay. <laughs> Uh, whoops. <laughs> you guys are hilarious. Okay. <laughs> it would be. 
the goblet. We have to keep the goblet alive here over the coming weeks. All right. So, uh, yeah, more than a feeling. Okay. A very specific, it's more of a riff chord arpeggiation mixture. Okay. We're on a D chord, but we've got stuff moving. Okay. You've got a sus four going back to the D major, and then you're anticipating a move to the C sus, uh, C add nine, G over B, or the G, I guess. Okay. So, with this one, this isn't like a, a core, uh, an arpeggiation picking pattern that we covered yet. Okay. And, uh, so how do we practice this, right? Like you've got to just figure out, okay, what you go slowly, take it, you know, like half a bar at a time, right? Just get that first part. Okay. Right. Maybe it sounds good when I'm going down, up, down, up. Okay. Right. Just take it in little chunks, really slow. Lots of repetition, and you're going to burn that in, right? And I'm not very good at it now, but I taught this song for guitar tricks like several years ago, okay? One of the Boston songs that still survived the cut. It's still on guitar tricks, thankfully. We still have some Boston on there. Um, so, I, I mean, I had to work really hard. I remember that it didn't come immediately for me, right? Like, I had to uh, keep working on that and go slow and keep get it under the fingers with lots of repetition and then it was there and now <laughs> i'm trying to play it and it's not there anymore because i haven't played it in years but there you go okay that's what we got to do to get it get it going okay so uh last turn on some distortion i know this sort of came up earlier and so Halen example here is, you know, more of a, right? It's again, it's, it's like the Boston thing. It's an, chords being arpeggiated, but sort of turn into more of a riff. Okay. And now I've got some distortion. I'm using some palm muting to like keep it tight. Which of course is a great technique if you're if you've got a crunch sound or you've got some distortion, you can use. Yeah, yes, harmonics detected, Andre. I love it. Oh. The palm mute. Yes, Ron. So when I've got a lot of distortion, okay. <laughs> Um, you know, that might be what you're going for. Like sometimes you can arpeggiate, uh, you know, and it fits the song of what you're doing. Like, you know, right. Like sort of that sort of thing that we were doing a little bit earlier with chords and just picking out notes from the chord. Some of that stuff works great with a crunch tone. Something like this was designed to you be used in conjunction with a palm mute, which means you've got your karate chopper here down by the saddles of the bridge and you're just dampening those strings and you hear that sound right right so very specific you know adding some expressive techniques into this thing and just the overall idea of this like you can apply this to court you know you know kind of go back and forth between palm muted and Opening up a little bit. Right? <laughs> yes, we need it. the Marshall stack for all of this, right? Just showing you what you can do with this. Of course, with a distorted guitar, you can arpeggiate chords. Put some palm muting on it to make it nice and tight and sort of, you know, give it that little you know, really expressive sound or make them pop out with full distortion, right? Like, uh, <laughs> I can't do it. Uh, 
that was a bad Zeppelin there, but that's what, what I sort of thought of, right? You know, <laughs> okay. Zeppelin, right? You got a little bit of a crunch tone. He's arpeggiating stuff, right? Oh, yeah, I forgot. There was another Zeppelin one I wanted to do. Uh, anybody know this one? With adding in some notes onto the arpeggiations. Right? So that's Dire Maker, right? Like, uh, And uh, you've got the very similar chords to what Sleepwalk was, the only difference being, yeah, exactly, Jody One. You've got an F major, right? These are, these, uh, this particular chord progression, right? The one to the six, minor six, to the four to the five, they call those the ice cream changes. So there's tons of songs that have this sort of. Okay, so he's arpeggiating with a little bit of palm muting and then adding on some extra notes to the end of this, right? Okay. Where, here's your root up top. So he's just sliding up from the root to the second note in the scale to the third. He's just going up to the third on a major chord, right? Same thing on the minor chord. Here's A minor, but here's the root, here's the second, and you go up one fret to the third. Okay. Whoops. Ah. All right. So, another example arpeggiating and just adding in a little twist, maybe some sliding notes off that top root note. Scott, how to practice to arpeggiate without staring at the strings. Yeah, so that's, that's a tough one. You've got to, uh, here's the thing. What you want to do is try to simplify as much as possible. So if you're practicing chord changes and you don't really have the picking pattern under your fingers, you're, pro you're gonna get kind of frustrated, okay? So what I recommend is just stay on one chord and just work that picking pattern over and over and over, okay? If it's the kind of thing, like a lot of these songs sort of have a repetitive picking pattern. I know the Boston and Van Halen are, are kind of specific, rip, more riffy type things, but more of just like a, a arpeggiated pattern that goes through some chord changes. Don't worry about changing the chords. Just get that picking pattern down. So just stay on one chord and that way you can look at the strings and just focus on it and just go slow and just drill it over and over and over and over again, okay? What's gonna start to happen is you'll get some muscle memory going, okay? Scott, you got some muscle memory going there. Now I can start to introduce some chord changes because I've got some muscle memory and my pick is, is just gonna have a good, a better feel for what strings it has to hit. I maybe don't have to look at it as much or at all, okay? So that's where we want to get to, where you've burned in it enough that it's muscle memory. And now, okay, now I'm going to work with the chord changes. All right. Hopefully that helps. Ron, circle of fifths. Uh, cool. Yeah. Uh, that's a great idea. We did do a circle of fifths on Facebook Live, but it was a while ago. So I'll put it down. I like that idea. Thank you, sir. Uh, some, of, some of what you played earlier was up around the bend. Yeah. Right? So sliding a triad and arpeggiating. And again, it's got sort of, it's it's a lot like that our, that picking pattern that we were sort of playing with in the last half of the lesson here with the like the Folsom Prison one. It's just added into a riff here with, you know, the open D. <laughs> All 
right? Cool, man. Good, good call there with Fogarty. Exactly, Ian. Get in the Carnegie Hall. Practice, practice, practice. Are there lessons on the chords in the course? Example of which chords are acceptable in a key? Yes, Andre. So check out Guitar Fundamentals. And actually, we talk a lot about that in the style courses as well, the core learning system on guitar tricks, okay? Um, particularly, um, there's a chapter in Guitar Fundamentals that talks about the chords in the key, okay? Uh, yeah. Which do I play in F sharp minor? Yeah. Th there's, you know, I I've talked about that in the past. Maybe I'll do a, a future session just talking about the chords in a key and how to think of those, all the chord sets <laughs> right on. Uh, Sora's, Sarah's farewell. Not familiar with that. Sorry, Mr. Daniel. <laughs> good, good, good. Uh, so while I'm trying to learn how to play scales, is this an addition on an entry level, say practice a single chord? Uh, no, Doug, what I was talking about was, you know, breaking up your practice into manageable chunks, right? So for like, I think the question sort of had something to do with, well, how am I supposed to play these chord changes and look at the strings at the same time and make sure I'm picking the right strings? And the answer is to try and just break up what you're working on and do lots of repetition on one aspect of it so that you don't have to think about it as much when you move on to the other aspect of what you're learning, right? Which might be the chord changes, okay? I think that's maybe what you were asking about maybe a little bit. <laughs> All right. Breaking through plateaus on improvising. We can talk a little bit about improvising in an upcoming session. That's another great idea. Breaking through plateaus you gotta you gotta get outside the box and i don't mean that literally with the pentatonic boxes i mean like uh there's lots of things you can do to just switch it up like learn songs from a different style learn solos from a different style and that'll sort of like take you outside all your usual things that you're doing when improvising it'll make you think about things a little bit differently right? Uh, playing games like call and response, like doing practice improvising drills kind of things like a call and response or uh, listen to a song and try to play the melody, the vocal melody of the song, and then just see how many different, how you can expand upon that melody a little bit. And, you know, always a good thing to, to work, you know, once you start working on an idea, work on it in all part, different parts of the neck as well. Lots of things. Uh, I'm just sort of spitballing a little bit. I could go into a lot more detail, maybe in a future session about improvising. All right. <laughs> Excellent, Andre. I hope you do check out the fundamentals. And uh, yes, metal all the way. I love it. <laughs> Sayor is another black metal band with folk elements. Awesome. That sounds very interesting. I have to check that out. <laughs> Mike, thank you from Bakersfield. I appreciate it. Uh, hybrid picking in another lesson. Have we already done that? I have. I, I don't think I've really done a hybrid picking. We can do that. I, we got some great ideas here, so I'll, I'll sort of brainstorm a little bit and, and find something cool for next week. Guys, I super appreciate you joining. We had a really great turnout tonight, and I'm super thankful for that. And I thank all of you for joining in and hanging out. Uh, that was awesome. Yeah, Tim, uh, practicing it slow, letting it become a habit. I always want to hear, uh, hear it sound like the song. It's tough. It absolutely is. But just once you've done it a little bit, like if you force yourself to do that, if you force yourself to just slow down and get into what's happening and make sure that you're doing it correctly and just go over it over and over and over, you'll start to get used to the process. But beyond that, you'll also start to trust the process because it works. Because you, you, if you put in that repetition at slow speeds, you will find that all it is is just about drilling it to bring it up to speed, but you're playing it correctly down there. Do you know what I mean? And it just gets easier and easier and easier from, from there. You know, if you keep trusting in that proce process, process for our Canadians and, uh, you know, kind of keep going with it. All right. Wow. Blowing up here. Uh, super session. Thank you, Andre. Jody, thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Right on. Uh, King 50. 
Thank you. Thanks, Erica. Appreciate you jumping on. I can't get the same distortion from the acoustic. It's going to be tough. <laughs> uh, thanks. Thanks, Susan, as always. Scott, Mo, thank you, sir. And thanks for the idea. Don, Jeff, Eddie, everybody. Have a great weekend back at everybody. Thanks, Ron. <laughs> oh, Sophia, <laughs> we've been missing you. Get back on. All right. Thanks, Ian. Judah, working on your Alabama on guitar tricks. See you next week working on your Alabama. Sweet home Alabama. <laughs> uh, your first week with guitar, Don. Yeah, I know we talked about a lot of more advanced concepts. Stick with it, man. Okay, hopefully this was a little bit helpful. When you get to this stuff, it will be. <laughs> ah, Sophia, you'll get it next week. Uh, Peter, right on. Wolverine, oh, pleasure, dude. Hit me up. You st I still owe you a lesson. <laughs> All right. So uh, cheers, everybody, to the weekend. Thanks, Dree. Thanks for your questions. As always, Evan's got a great suggestion. Uh, Any tune. There's lots of software programs. Uh, if you put like an MP3 into it, the amazing slowdowner. Uh, if you have a digital audio workstation of some sort, GarageBand. I, I think you can do it on GarageBand. Uh, you can slow stuff down. It's a it's a big help. Gee, thanks so much, Doug. So begin with a single chord as part of your daily practice. Yeah. So uh, check out the YouTube channel here on Guitar Tricks. I have some lessons on how to practice fretting chords. It's in the bar chord. Uh, it's in lessons about bar chords, but it, the method works for any chords, okay? You kind of have to practice getting your fingers in the right spot and picking through everything and making sure that all the notes are ringing out nicely. And there's a way to practice that over and over, putting your fingers on and then practicing between two chords, okay? Uh, but the best thing to do as part of daily practice to begin, uh, Doug, is to sign up for Guitar Tricks if you're not on already and just work through guitar fundamentals, okay? We start right at the beginning and just go through it at your own pace and just keep at it. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Anthony McSee. It's my bubbly water, my bubbly water. Cheers from Canada. All my Canadians, thank you for joining. Highborn Tranquility. Okay, I'm going to check that one out. Thanks, Fred. Thanks, Jeff. Judah. Don. Tom. All right on, Tom. Thanks for joining GT. Sweet home, Alabama. <laughs> yes. Old Tree. Man, you're just giving me too much black metal. I have to check it out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. Smash the like button. Get all YouTube on you. Thanks, Jeff. I appreciate it. <laughs> all right, everybody. Take care. Have a great weekend into next week, and uh, we'll see you same time next week. Take care, everyone. <laughs>